The next phase of the forehand is the loading phase. So from here, once we've established the racket, keeping it on the outside of our body, we're going to let our body start taking over and doing most of the work and we're going to forget about the racket. What needs to happen is we need to have our racket free fall and get our strings to the floor. This is where we're really going to have to cut our backswing in half in order to compete at a high speed. What you want to do is feel like you pat the dog and sit in a chair. We want our body to move like an elevator, so let's keep our back as straight as possible. Notice how the racket head does not go behind the hand. This is very important for storing the energy. We also want to let go with the non-hitting hand if it's on the throat or spread it out like so and have it fall parallel with the baseline in order to stay on balance. And we're going to be using it later when we uncoil. So from here, we are effectively loading our body. We want to get as low as possible and one of my best tennis mentors that I've ever had explained it to me as sitting in a chair. So what you want to do is feel like you're sitting in a chair, getting low and athletic, and simultaneously the racket falls with the body. You could say the arms fall together and the legs fall together as well until we're boom, sitting in a chair. It's gonna feel like doing a squat. And the more energy that you load in this phase of the swing, the more that you're gonna be able to put in later on, okay? So from here, you should know that we have no tension in the arm as well. It's at a three out of 10 max, and it even gets even looser when we sit in the chair. The arm becomes dead weight at this point in the swing, okay? The arm is gonna become an independent segment from the body. The body's a little bit tense, okay? We've got tension built up in the legs and we're getting ready to spring up from our toes. Your heels should also be off the ground, okay? Or, you know, ready to explode up from the toes. And from here, this is what you need to do, essentially. Now, we're gonna store energy differently when the ball is at different heights. So, when the ball is high, we're gonna keep our racket high and we're gonna pat the dog to get slightly under the height of the ball, but we don't have to drop our racket all the way down here. So, what you wanna get into the habit of doing is only free falling with the racket slightly under the height of the ball. We wanna feel like we're swinging along a tabletop, keep it consistent with the height of the ball. We always get just as low with the legs. This is a must, but the racket, after we set up, it goes independently from the body. So a high ball, I still load my legs just as much, but I keep my racket up here. I delay a little bit longer, and then I explode up, and the racket only really falls just under the height of the ball. I feel like I'm swinging across a tabletop. At waist height, we free fall slightly under the height of the ball again. Okay, you just get your hand slightly below the height, and you come through and we'll go through that, all of that fancy stuff later in the swing. A low ball, we get low, and now the racket has to fall a little bit lower, just slightly under the height of the ball, and then we go. That's what you need to know for storing the energy.